is filth, but this is a sin. It's research, Mrs. Watchard. Scientific research. Well, it's filthy research, then. Hardly. He is a brilliant scientist. Amongst the so-called filth, there could be the answers to the universe. A cure for measles or the common cold. The cause, more likely. Oh, my good God. Exactly. What's that meant to do? It's his time machine. His what? He was building a machine that could travel to both the distant future and the past. What? Back to unwashed dishes and unclean clothes? No thank you. No, I think he was searching for love. He's been set all adrift since young Miss Emma was... Taken. He doesn't say anything, doesn't he? His nice suits slide right off him since she's been gone. And now he's gone and disappeared as well. Where would such a sad man go? This might tell us. Well, you can't read that, Mr. Philby. It's his personal diary. I suspect he left it here for that very purpose. Well, he might have written things where not to wear, about my Sunday singing and the like. Mrs. Watchett, he's my best friend, and moreover, a fellow scientist. Deducing his fate, be that he has succeeded in building his machine, or that he's lost to us forever. Don't say that. In any event, as friends and scientists, we must know. Our fool is the quest for knowledge, not what brought us in here. Yes. I'm afraid, though, Mr. Philby, what if it leads us to nothing at all? Then we'll be forced to speculate. I just want him back, that's all. I should give him such a thump for all the concern he's caused me, rat bag. We're merely searching for the truth, Mrs. Watchett, and when we find it, we will find Andrew.
He's written it like he was taking notes all the time. It's a mess, like his room. I think it's going to work best if we try and read it together. I'll read the notes he's written on himself, and you read the parts on young Miss Emma. I'll cry. Yes, I suspect you shall. I may be prone to tears myself. After all, she was such a lovely girl. If you think it will find him. I do. You start, it seems. Your eyes are green tonight. I thought they were blue. Have you eaten sulfur lately? <laughs> Always a scientist. I am told they change when I am most pleased, sulfur or not. Well, she was a smart girl, always reading. And why are you so pleased, my love? Because you are near, and I am near you. There's a certain chemistry, no? Yes. At every time I kiss you, I'm at a loss to explain the magnitude I feel through science. My greatest gift fails me. If your kisses are your idea of failure, Andrew, then let us both flunk. What's flunk mean? It's another word for fail. Before we both flunk together, my lovely girl, there's something I'd like to say. The dust! Stay in character, Mrs. Watch. Oh, character is it? La di da. I have waited many a year to say this, and although I am a man of science, I am at a loss to conclude why my heart chosen this particular moment to sit firmly in my throat. What a dear man. You are merely anxious to start the rest of your life, my love, as am I. How sweet. I would be honoured if you were to consider accepting my offer to inquire as to the possibility of the likelihood if you weren't opposed to... Uh, just ask her for God's sake. I adore you, Andrew, and it will be my honour to be your wife. I've wanted to marry you ever since we met. I've loved you even before we met. But that's not possible. Loved him before they met. All right. So a man can go through time and space, but a girl can't dream of the man she eventually marries. He's <laughs> scientist.
Let's carry on. I closed my eyes to kiss Emma, but no matter how far forward I leaned, she wasn't there. I looked about the park bench. It was dark, but I could make out the immediate area. At first, I thought I was rehearsing this speech to myself, and then I heard a whimper. It was Emma lurched against a birch tree. She seemed limp or drunk in the darkness. As I got closer, I saw that she was not alone. A man in black was at her throat. She was virtually lifeless. A string of blood meandered down her dress. Her jewels were gone and her earrings ripped out already. I heard a shout from behind me and then there was blackness. I'd been knocked unconscious by an accomplice, it seems. Emma's body was found by the pond the next day. Her injuries are too awful to describe even here for the sake of science. In my mind, I go over what happened that day again and again. Each time I close my eyes to kiss her, I would try to change what happened in my mind. And then it occurred to me, what if I could change what happened? Through science, my machine was near completion. And what better reason to travel time than to save the life of my most dear love? There seems no other purpose to me. Please stop, Mr. Philby. That is only drawings for several pages. Drawings of what? Drawings of this. Watchett? Mrs. Watchett, are you awake? Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off. Just sat down for a moment. More tea? Thank you. No, I found his notes on my last visit. It's most peculiar. Shall we read them? Yes, but I don't think I can play the part of me. You take your acting rather seriously, don't you? Yes. Andrew and I were in a marvellous production of King Lear at Eton once. The audience cheered loudest, and we too took our curtain call. Did you both play kings? No, we played King Lear's daughters. Uh, real ladies were scarce, you see. Uh, never mind. Can you read the notes he's written on me so that I can continue the notes he's written on himself? Sounds like you'd be better off playing Mr. Philby, Mr. Philby. Please, Mrs. Watchett, I think this could be vital to discovering his whereabouts. Yes, of course, I'll play you. Lord forgive me. I'm close now, my darling Emma. I will see you soon. I will take you away from danger. If I use the scepter throttle, I will be able to transition. I have obeyed all the laws of science save one. The law of possibility. There's a knock. Andrew, why have you not come to see me? 
Your students are graduated now, and they are saddened, as am I, that you no longer attend your university. Mrs. Watchet... What did you say about me? <laughs> Mrs. Watchet says that you are wasting away in your study. She is no longer allowed to clean in there, and we are both very worried. This is better than I expected. Don't worry, Philby. Well, let me in, Andrew. I'm your friend. I opened the door to my dear friend and showed him the marvel of my machine, my discovery of the fourth dimension. I don't remember this. He never let me in. Do you think he went mad? A mad scientist? Hardly. He was obsessive, but not mad. There must be some clue. I explained it all to him, knowing full well he would remember none of it. What? Are you reading this right? Yes. But when I travel back in time to save you, my darling Emma, this visit from Philby will have ended differently. It did. He never let me in. Shut up. To have the house completely clean for the police tomorrow morning, they'll know I'm a good housekeeper. It will be spotless. What are they searching for? Evidence. They said evidence. Yes, perhaps we should retire. Do you mind if I catch a few weeks on the Chesterfield? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Mr. Philby. You'll take the guest room. It's been made up freshly this morning. Oh, and you needn't worry about spending the night alone with a woman either. I'm married. At least, I was. What would Andrew make of it all, though? His voice? Yes. Why didn't he stay? He's continuing his search, he said. His diary. It's different. It's changed. No, that's the same book from before. That is a different book to the one we were just reading. I can feel it in me waters. Now, me waters are seldom wrong. Well, at least they're more accurate than those filthy bottles and flames you seem to admire. This is the same book in every way, except... What? I don't rightly know. It's... Well, let's call it women's intuition, then. You might have picked up some from the stage. Listen to this. Philby came and implored that I let him into the studio, but I could not. He left dejected, and I shed a tear for the sorrow I had caused. But I knew in my heart, and as a scientist, that he would understand in time. 
That's a different ending. It's what really happened, but it's different. Did he correct it? No, it's a first-hand draft. He's travelled through time to find her. The past has changed before our eyes. Indeed. He's searching for Emma. Does he find her in this diary? Although I'm a man of science, I'm at a loss to conclude why my heart has chosen this particular moment to sit firmly in my throat. That's the same as before. You are merely anxious to start the rest of your life, my love, as am I. Yes, the same. I would be honoured if you were to accept my offer to inquire as to the possibility of the likelihood, if you weren't opposed to. I adore you, Andrew, and it would be my honour to be your wife. I've wanted to marry you ever since we met. I've loved you even before we met. I leaned in to kiss Emma, but this time I did not shut my eyes. I kissed her with relish and took her in my arms. I had saved her. Oh my! I had saved Emma from her monstrous death. We ran out into the streetlights. I kept an eye out for villains. I had won. I had won the battle with time. She was none the wiser and we were together. She took another step and trod poorly on the flagstone. Before I could reach her, she was already huddling to protect herself from the horse and carriage on the road. It was dark. The driver never knew. I know that is a different ending, but that's what actually happened. How can that be? He's been and gone and we're standing still in time? I will try again. Perhaps in the future I can find a society large enough to answer my questions. He's travelling in time. That's where he is. Travelling in time. But how will we ever know where he is? I think he wants us to read, Mrs. Watchett. The year 2010. A hundred and fifteen years away. I'll make tea. Two thousand and ten was a year I'd rather forget. The working classes seem to have an endless supply of money to spend on furniture and clothing they don't need, while the rich spend all their time looking as if they've just come from the field. Skin as dark as berry, and their clothes ripped, ill-fitting, and not a lady or gentleman amongst them. All classes have a constant fascination with the little machine that sits permanently in their arm, and although everyone seems to be communicating every single heartfelt desire, there isn't a book to be found, except for a heathen plethora of cooking books. Although education is now available to all, it seems a smaller amount of people are interested in actually doing anything. I shan't stay here a moment longer. Oh dear, I'm pleased I won't see that day. It sounds ghastly. I met Philby's great-grandson. Oh, I wonder who you'll be marrying to be getting such a great-grandson. He worked in an area called IT. 
IT seems much like when Philby and I are on stage in that version of King Lear. A lot of puff and blow and everyone's pleasantly fooled. What he actually did was indecipherable, even to a scientist. What was his name? I asked for his card, and he gave me a certain look. He pressed a piece of paper into my hand. It was an odd feeling. What was it? He called himself a he-male. It said, he mail me, and there are a lot of strange symbols. Primitive speech, yet intriguing. Perhaps he worked for the railways. Perhaps. The year 3000. I've searched the alien city that London has become. I went to our grand library and a building of constantly moving images stood in its place. The granite and blue stone of our finest public building now more like a fountain of ever-changing water. One need only ask a question and the answer appears right in front of you. Even a thousand years on, there was no great knowledge of time travel. I must go forward to when people are better educated. The year 3300. There's desolation everywhere. There's no sign of the city and town I once knew. Just debris. I found a young man on the run. He seemed friendly, though a little foggy. Hey, what you doing, man? Run! What has happened to our fair London? London's gone underground for hundreds of years, man. These meteorites are raining down almost constantly now. It's a death sentence. Then what are you doing roaming about in such danger? I've been given the death sentence. They used to send us to Australia, now they send us outside. Run! I ran back to my machine but was struck dumb by a stone that hit me in the head. 
I must have leaned hard on the time selector. For when I came to, it was in a world most strange in the year 802,071. There was nothing but a green field and water that flowed down a Thames that was crystal clear. A miracle. The air was soft and clean, and bright sun shone all about. I covered my machine with grasses, and decided to travel the bank of this magical river. I'd enjoyed the flora of this future London, and now was desperate to find some fauna. I heard a noise. It wasn't the water in the river, but it was coming from the river. A girl. A girl swimming? You think women will be allowed in the future? If these suffragettes have their way. I plucked her from the water easily enough. She had barely struggled. She was small and pale, and dared not look my way, for fear, I suspect. And then I noticed we were not alone. Some twelve men and women stood on the verge, all pale and wearing grey tunics. I thought that perhaps I had interrupted some form of ritual the way they stared. This was no ritual. These people, the Eloi, were passive, and it simply wasn't their nature to assist a drowning girl. They stared at her instead. Reacting to danger was not their strong point. Her name was Weena. She was almost cheerless and enormously intelligent. She listened to my story and was the first person in all the times I had visited to understand me. Suddenly she asked, Can this machine of yours travel back to the time you departed? Yes, I've been there a few times en route. Would you like to travel back with me? No, but my brother, he's young and deserves a chance at life. But this is paradise. No disease, no rain, no work, no taxes. There is always more than first meets the eye. This place is altogether different at night, and the Morlocks are growing restless. It will soon be time for harvesting. Harvesting? Yes. The Morlocks live underground, and when they are hungry, they feed on us. Don't you run? Or hide? It is not our way. We live and die in peace unless the Morlocks have other plans, and then I will be better off dead. You should have let me drown. They breed with us. They select certain women to breed with. I am of age. What's that sound? The Mornocks. They're already upon us. Do you hear the screaming? Yes. I will be next. It is the way. What came upon us next was a creature of such might and terror as has ever been known on the face of the earth. Pale and covered in coarse hair, the Morlocks were as hideous as the Eloi were lovely. Save my brother, he's too young! Weena was suddenly in the air, helpless in the hands of the Morlock hunter. It looked my way briefly, but seemed unimpressed, and the scene was ghastly. Body parts in a feeding frenzy, muffled screams, and people standing passively while they took their last breath. The river ran red. I ran back to my machine. It was gone. The Morlocks had discovered it and moved it with their strength. I followed them to their world below. Like a giant factory, unfathomable cogs and wheels spinning endlessly to keep the pleasure dome above in a fit state. The Morlocks worked hard for their prey. slowly down the underground corridors, 
The Morlocks were all but asleep from their orgy of human sacrifice and bloodletting. The stench was unbearable. I used my finest tartan handkerchief to cover my mouth and keep from fainting. I thank Mrs. Watchett for always insisting I carry a fresh one. Who'd have thought her kindness would assist me so readily 800,000 years in the future? Now that's a reference if ever I saw one. Mina was in a cage. The Morlocks had kept her alive until they felt awake enough after their feast. Run away, Traveller. Take this time while the Morlocks are resting. They won't miss you a second time. I will take you with me. Please leave. They'll smell you in their sleep. I've left a woman to her fate once before. I shan't do it again. I can hear them. They're waking up. The key to this cage is lost. Please go. I decided to stay with this frail, childlike woman. She was the first person to understand me since I left on this journey of time. We held hands. I knew we were going to die. But I felt great comfort in the touch. He stayed to die with her. He's dead, oh my lord, I don't believe it!
the darkness, the Morlocks had woken. I could feel the pressure of their digits round my neck. They threw me against my machine and Weena cried. The first emotion she had expressed. I watched as a single tear floated down her cheek. She had evolved beyond her clan of pacifists and shown a will to live. I was slumped in my machine and a Morlock stood on the time lever to get me in his belly. And in that moment, he had saved my life. What else? That's all for this journal. But we've read them all. Except for this one. There's no year on it. Dearest Emma, I have travelled through all time to try and save you. I have learned all that I can to bring you back. I have built the most extraordinary machine the world will ever know to find you. But the future is all this machine can exact. I have now gone to the end of the life of the sun, just a dim shadow blowing over a frozen earth. The seasons have stopped millions of years ago, but I know I will love you to eternity. Why? Because I have been there. I'm going home now without you. It was him. It was him, do you hear? He stood at the front door dressed as if it'd just been for a stroll. He asked if we'd enjoyed his notebooks. I hit him. Then he asked for all the keys to the house and then he was off. He just sat in his mechanical carriage and simply vanished. Did he say anything else? He said he'd be bringing a young lady home for tea and a young lad. Vegetarians, he said. He just had to whiz forward 800,000 years. Will you be staying with us, Mr. Philby? I expect so. What if he never comes back? What if he stays in the future with the girl? Then we shall dine alone, Mrs. Watchett. It's about time. What a propriety. What of it? Nothing. <laughs>